One of the most striking changes is the growth of access from smartphones and tablets. Tablets in particular, we've seen news use almost double in most of the countries we looked at last time since our last survey 10 months ago. We see people now accessing news on computers, on smartphones and on tablets and in many cases on two of those in an average week or all three. I get most of my news from a smartphone or tablet. It's more interactive, you can press something to play, um, you can scroll through it quite quickly. Before I wasn't very much focused on reading the news on a daily basis but now because stories come in so frequently and they are so succinct and you get just the headline and you can get a real overview of what's going on I'm much more into reading the news. Nowadays I get the news mainly through tablets and smartphones I was very much uh, more addicted to news. Maybe it's less uh, deep, it's more superficial but it's more frequent. Our data shows that people are accessing news more frequently as a result of accessing via these new devices. And the more devices they have, the more frequently they access. Having said that, we also find that people who own tablets don't stop watching television. 80% of them are still watching television news in an average week, and almost half of them are reading a newspaper. So what we see is, is an increasing complexity, an additional layer of news. It's not really replacing any particular media. This year we've extended our survey to cover nine countries and what we find is very substantial differences between those countries. In Germany and France, for example, there's much greater attachment to traditional news and traditional platforms. That's primarily broadcast television and printed newspapers. Whereas if we look in the UK, the US, Denmark and Japan, there's a pattern where online is much more popular as a way of accessing news and there's quicker uptake of new devices. And then we also find differences within countries. When we ask people about their main source of news, we see a preference for new media and new platforms amongst young people, once again with older people being more dependent on printed newspapers and television news. As people are increasingly adopting mobile devices, personal devices, the way they find news is also changing. So we see them using aggregators such as Flipboard, or social media like Twitter and Facebook. And in that sense, the news is coming to them more often. So instead of going out and searching for news, it's being pushed to them. Social media, you can subscribe to apps on Facebook. Um, you can see what your friends have read. You click through and you see it and you read it. I use social media a lot. All the media houses that they have Facebook pages, I like them and on, I follow them on Twitter. So there are journalists I follow. I keep a close eye on who's filing what stories. And I, that's how I get my news mostly. More widely, we find that news brands are being disintermediated increasingly by big American technology companies like Amazon and Apple and Google. So in France, in Germany, in Italy, it's now search that's the primary way in which people find news rather than brand. And that's having a big impact on the whole business of journalism. One of the surprising findings is the continuing strength of newspapers and traditional media. In our global sample, 50% said they bought a newspaper in the last week, and even more had read a newspaper. That compared with just 5% who said they paid for digital news in the same period. I like newspapers because uh, I grew up uh, with, you know, habit, uh, with that habit of reading physically newspapers, and when it is on print, I relate to a printed newspaper more than I would uh, say an online media well i guess the old thing still gets its charm so when you are sort of in the middle of the day after lunch you want to have a break over coffee and then you want to read a newspaper um, you know that makes you really relaxed i read a newspaper if i see one lying around and i've got nothing to do in the tube i read the metro quite a lot because it's free it's there and you have no internet access but the majority of occasions, no. So how are newspapers going to deal with the challenge of getting people to pay for digital news? Our survey shows that across most of the countries we've looked at, there's been a significant increase in payment. In the UK, digital payment has doubled, or more than doubled in the last year. It's also up in Germany, France and the US, albeit from a low base. These are just some of the main findings from our report, but we'd encourage people to explore more of the data and the findings which are all on the website, and please do get in touch if you've got any questions.